بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله This is our study circle for every day Inshallah and today we're going to see what the students had uh, study from yesterday and try to have a small discussion about it uh, Before I would like to remind you that we already had finished Surah Al-Mulk Tabarak Al-Ladhi Bi'adihi Al-Mulk so it is your duty that tomorrow is Friday, Saturday and Sunday. You have three days to review the surah. Inshallah, Monday we're going to be starting a new surah. All right, we're going to see what uh, Yusuf, inshallah, had uh, studied yesterday to and what to share with us. Okay. Well, at the time of the... Buried. At time of what? Buried. Uh, at time of what? Bereavement. <laughs> Grief. <laughs> Grief. Bereavement. Bereavement. Okay. What the word first? We need to know wailing. What is wailing? It's like screaming. And screaming, yelling, shouting, crazy. uh, saying. Uh, so is 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 scream shouting with uh, crying, okay? At the time of calamity, maybe is a better word, a little bit easier for you to understand. Okay, what about wailing? Um, what is the book phrase that you're using? Um, Muharramat. Okay, this is Muharramat. This is the book Muharramat. That mean is a plural of what haram, okay? Something muharram, that is something secret or something muharram. That means something what is forbidden, okay? That it has a, this kind of prohibition. So the book muharramat is a plural of muharram. It talks about things which Allah had forbid, all right? And he chose the subject about wailing during the time of calamity all right go ahead it says the person who who wells at the time of calamity, uh, calamity. hardship difficulty disaster uh, when something serious falling in you death earthquake uh, car accident all these things at the time of Calamity, what What about it? So wait, do they mean just women? Because it says if a woman who wills does not repent before her death, mm -hmm. she will be raised on the day of um, resurrection wearing a shirt of tar and mm -hmm. a garment of scabs. Okay. Uh, this is a very good question. It's saying if a woman, so the question of Yusuf here is what? Is it only applied to women? Can somebody know how to answer this question? Is so that mean, is it okay for a man to do it, but not okay for a woman to do it? I don't believe that it means that it only applies to the women. I believe that maybe in more cases it's the women who are acting in such manner. It's very good, Zid. Very good. This is smart. Is nature of women more than men and women are more softer and weaker than men men the you know like a car Mercedes car and a Kia car okay uh, so Mercedes been built in a way you see that can take more hits and accident and other this car they build nowadays as soon a car hit it the whole thing is okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created uh, men in a nature that they can take disappointments more than women. But Allah made women to be this. So you understand, in weakness, because they have to be mothers, okay, to attend to their children and to be more caring, okay? So it does not mean if a woman wailing <coughs> in time of calamity she will be punished, but a man is not, okay? 
but this said women because mostly something applied to their nature and they are the ones that they could not take disappointments like us okay so men supposed to be a little bit tough than a woman okay okay this is one question and this was very good so now we know about the punishment of those people who wail in because when you wail in and doing something like this that means you are not content you are not satisfied you understand with the with the decree of allah all right and a muslim is supposed to learn about sabr and patience and how to deal with calamity to remember allah to seek allah's forgiveness to go make salah you understand but shouting crying screaming what's going to what is it going to change the condition it's not you see so in a time of disaster people need to reflect more in allah and to have uh, patience uh, to be their 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 garment more than crying and falling in the ground and and you understand breaking glasses and screaming and yelling and shouting and okay so the punishment here will be what that in the day of the judgment this woman or this door let's say it like this the door of such action will be raised wearing what a shirt or a garment made out of tar do you know what anybody know what tar is yes. what it is like what's the other words that they call it mm. the asphalt oh, yeah. like asphalt. okay like the tar that, because you know this is very hot is very hot that means she be wearing something that will be burning okay all right and um then you say scabs yeah mm -hmm. then she be wearing scabs uh for sure this is a, a form of punishment also okay mm. all right this is it um striking or branding the face to humans and animals okay so, so um, that we first we why the, this woman is punishment or the door of such an act that because they did something that which is prohibited mm -hmm. okay they did not know how to control their emotion and to submit to the decree of Allah because whatever happened is by Allah decree okay is by Allah decree and we have to learn how to swallow and swap you understand Allah's decree by a proper attitude okay so this is something is prohibited in the Islam the second thing we're talking about punishing or hitting or beating whatever or striking whatever word you want to use okay to a human or what animal. or animal okay what to say about this it says if you have to brand the animal mm -hmm. do not do it on the face does anybody know why people brand animals mm -hmm. yes to show that that's their property or exactly their okay because animals you see is easy to mix together and me easy to go stray and almost they understand you can have the same colors okay or the same feature so as a part of knowing which which cow or donkey or horse is yours so the people they do what brands in that they know this not not cutting you understand they do something like hot iron and they put it okay on places in the body to make a mark so it will take it will burn you see this area there is no more hair growing there so now if you some place lost your cow as example because this is a big loss this is a property like somebody losing a car somebody you have uh, identification you understand in the dashboard so when you are uh, maybe chevrolet all of them look the same but they go and look to the to what 
identification number it will tell so those people also they have in that time means and ways to identify their property and account to them a lot of money a big loss so if you found it in the forest and now you want to know is this yours or not so somebody had ran it in the tail in the back or in the bottom of the foot okay all right so what is saying now when branding the animals um branding the animals in the face is done to make a distinguished mark so that each animal's owner may be known and the animal may be returned to him if it is lost this is haram because it is called suffering and deformity if people claim that this is their tribal custom and that a distinguished mark is necessary it should be made on some other part of the animal. Mm -hmm. not the so head. it's allowed but not to be in the face. Okay? Because the face is more sensitive. Okay? And more you understand that more honored than any other part of the body. And some people they even they do it to human being. I don't know if you notice some people from like Sudanese and different tribes, not only Sudanese, Africa in general, okay? And you found that they have things here, marks, okay, in, in their face. This is not acceptable. This is not acceptable, not to be done to the human being, and if it's done to animals, not to be done what? In the face. In the face, not to be done in the face. It's prohibited, all right? And like it says, if you punish your kids, you shouldn't strike them in their face. This is good. This is hair. this is right. Also, striking, striking, as a as a means of punishment, okay, or discipline. So it is allowed, but not to be where, not in the face, because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala honored, and also in the honor the face more than any other part of. The body that more respectable that this what you face the people with this what the people see from you people do not see your arm then people see your leg okay but always people see your face this when you meet them you talk to them all right so it shouldn't be slab on the face can you do Plus, it like behind their head huh? can you do it behind their head you have to do it in a places that is not be harmful to the person okay mm -hmm. not to be harmful or causing uh, permit uh, injury to the person okay also you have to understand in the face the most sensitive areas like the eyes this mm -hmm. is something very important okay you can break the teeth so this prohibited also for a man to hit his wife in her face or a father to say uh, hit the child or the mother in the face okay if there is a need for the discipline it will be in other parts on the body. Any question? No. All right. Um, All right. <coughs> book is about paradise and hell. Mm -hmm. um, I was reading about the description of hell. Okay. And it says <clears throat> hell is like very, 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 very big. Mm -hmm. And it was a little short story in here that said Muslims report that Abu Huraira, Rudy Lohan, said. We were with the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we heard the sound of something falling. Mm. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Do you know what that was? We said, Allah and His Messenger know best. He said that it was a stone that was thrown into hell 70 years ago, and yet it is on the way to reach the other side of hell until now. Mm. If there was a huge stone as big as seven caliphat stones and it was thrown from the edge of hell, it would fly through it for 70 years and yet it would still not reach the bottom. And it was talking about um, how big hell is that on the day of judgment, um, I think it's like 70 ropes that uh, are like tied to hell and each rope is held by 70 angels. No, 70,000. 70,000 angels. Yeah. Okay. Is this correct? I think so. Hold on.
Hell is brought forth that day by means of 70,000 robes. Mm -hmm. Each will be held by 70,000 angels. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine how big it is, <clears throat> how serious it is. 70, like a bridle, like a chain or a robe to build something like when you have, as example, a car and you want to tow it and they bought this wire or this rope, you understand, to put it, drag it. So hellfire will be brought to the place of the gathering of the people in the day of judgment, will be brought from wherever that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have it now. Because hellfire is real and exists, is that already been created. So it will be brought to the place where is the day of judgment, okay? Where is the gathering of the people? And it has 70,000 robe. And each robe is handled by 70,000 angels. So you can imagine how huge it is. It is is something very, very serious. And this it tells us about it. Why we have to know about it. So we know how serious it is and we can try to flee away from hellfire by staying away from what Allah forbid. Staying away from the shirk, from the kufr, from the disobedience, from the wrongdoing. Alright? Also that the Prophet Sallallahu you understand, telling about the Sahaba that this rock that been thrown so is the width or the large size of it and the depth also of it is so huge that a rock been thrown into hellfire. How, how long ago? 70. 70. What it say? So the one has been, that stone was thrown to hell 70 years ago. 70 years ago. And it's still on the way. And you imagine, understand, when something falling, you don't have to push it, you don't have to, you understand? For you to, to, to throw a rock to, the, to, to hide it, you have to do energy, you understand? You have to push it up. You put, okay, only an inch to try to throw it. But for you, for a rock to fall, you don't have to be pushing it, you understand? Because the what the what the you weight. not weight. only the weight gravity. the gravity okay so it will be falling and going faster than you understand when you throw it up but the Prophet Sallam, when the Sahaba heard this noise and he questioned about it they said what only Allah and His Messenger know Allah because He's the Creator of all things He's the Doer of all things. And the Prophet, because he get a revelation from Allah. But now, if somebody asks you a question, you don't say Allah and his messenger knows best. Okay? He said, Allah knows best. How do you say this in Arabic? Allahu Allah A'lam. Allah okay? So <coughs> this stone has been traveling all this time for 70 years. And just now is about to reach the bottom of hell. This shows you how serious it is. So anything that we do wrong brings us closer to hellfire. All right? So we need to watch our act and to this to keep us away from hellfire. Right? Anything else? Yes. Um, it says people will be continued to thrown into hell and how it would say like it speaks. Are there more and mm -hmm. it will it will like stop until Lord the Lord places His foot into it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, like puts his, his so foot. that every time the angels throwing kufar disobedience sinners in it, that hellfire is saying what? Is there any more? That means I have more. I have more space. That is the capacity is not limited capacity, okay? That if you bought 70,000 or 100,000, this eight, okay, no more place. No. Allah made it in a way that the more you throw in it, the more will take it. 
So nothing will satisfy the hellfire. That means to make it full until Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put his foot on top of it. Okay? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put his foot on top of it that like squeezing it and now became could not take anymore because Allah had promised hellfire and paradise okay that he will fail both of them it have to be full okay so hellfire is so big every time people get into it and angels throwing say bring more do you have more is there any more so the final Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when step on it okay that no more could not take anymore so it would be like squeezing the people squeezing the people or squeezing the the, the not squeezing the people that hellfire you understand like if you I can give you like example you understand like Stepping on, uh, if you have the tray, you understand the tray that we eat, uh, big trays that have big tray of rice, mm -hmm. and now you try to put it back in the trash bag to throw it away, and it's not. So now you take this oh. and you squeeze it. You understand? Okay. So it's still a tray, it's still a tray, and whatever is still dirty, there is still. The, Every, but you understand, it became a way that now you can put more than one tray in the trash can. And Allah knows best. Okay? These things, you understand, we believe it as is. We don't know, you understand. We don't to go in details that Islam doesn't tell us about it. Okay? All right. I have, I have one small question. Okay. Um, it says the sun and the moon will be like two rolled up bowls. On, in hell on the day of resurrection. Does mm -hmm. that mean like the sun and the moon will be mixed in hell? Like like making it hotter or what? For, for oh, you see, a, a one a tafsir in it because the moon and the sun been worshipped by people. It's part of Allah's creation. Mm -hmm. Like, you understand, a rock or something. But some people, they took the sun as a god. Okay. And to some people, they worship the moon as a god, okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing these people that if this, they are gods, look, they are in hellfire. Okay? All right. Um, I had a question too. I've heard that uh, some of the, the kuffar, they asked the Prophet Muhammad yes, him, so. you know, uh, how many angels are going to guard the... Mm -hmm. uh, the yeah, hellfire mm -hmm. guard the inhabitants, mm -hmm. and they said that uh, it was going to be nineteen angels, mm -hmm. because uh, if there were only one, then the people, if they get that understanding that there's only one, they would think all the inhabitants mm -hmm. of hellfire would be able to overpower mm -hmm. the angels. Is this true? Is is in Quran? Alayha tisat ashar. Okay. Which surah? Uh, mm -hmm. وَجَعَلْنَا أَصْحَابَ النَّارِ إِلَّا مَلَائِكَةً وَمَجَعَلْنَا عِدَّتُهُمْ إِلَّا فِتْنَةً لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا في سورة الحق let me double check تسعة آه وما جعلنا عدتهم إلا فتنة أوكي ت سورة المدثر. أوكى. 
Lawahatan lil Bashar alayha tisa'at ashar. Surah number 74, verse number 30. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explaining that wa ma ja'alna iddatum illa fitnatan lil ladhina kafur. Allah made the number of the, the angels that guard the hellfire a temptation and trial to those who disbelieve because they say, oh, there's only 19 angels guarding, okay? We, we, you understand, we can wipe them out, okay? Take them. <laughs> so Allah made that number, you understand that, to be a, a test for them, okay? Because actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make only one angel guarding hellfire, but you don't know the power and the might that Allah had gave to the angel. An angel, you understand, it can be even not a whole angel, but the wing, by one wing, he can swipe, you understand? Look, when you, 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 uh, uh, you have this iPad in front of you or your phone and you do it like this, <laughs> all these things are gone, you understand? Okay, or you hit it like this, all this information coming. One, one angel only by tip of his wing can swipe the whole universe. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him a different power and mighty. Okay? So it doesn't matter if 15 or 10 or 10,000, okay? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the believers, this will be frightening for them. And for the kuffar will be a temptation and trial for them. For the believers, they remember hellfire, they remember the power of Allah and the seriousness of the day of the judgment. But for the disbelievers, they say, oh, what's 19? We can take care of but it. But why, why would they just be burning? Like, who's going to try to escape if you're, like, burning? Huh? Why are you going to be, like, burning super hot? How are you going to escape anyways? Who is going to escape? But the people don't use the understand they're, they're, they think it's something that so that they can do it or whatever it is. This is a problem when there is no belief that the people do not believe. So okay. Wait, do they go through the gate or from the top of hell? Who? The disbelievers. They be thrown when you understand into hellfire. Right. They go to right, they be across. chaining and we don't know, you understand, all this about walking and crossing and all these things. We, whatever Allah said in the Quran, this is what we talk about it, okay? Uh, and he found that some verses talks about uh, that hellfire, like about even getting the people, you understand, like, uh, and grouching and making this noise um, like when you align and see somebody in front of him and he won't about to attack so Allah give ability understand to help fire to do many things so some people will be thrown some people you understand will be uh, dragged. dragged by chain and different things this is a whole subject we can talk about it later oh. inshallah now I have a question that's a little off topic but the I've heard that uh, also the jinn would also be able to be in Jannah as well. Um, do they have the same uh, uh, are same they... enjoyment? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Jannah is nothing except enjoyment. Whosoever in Jannah, okay. Uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَمْ يَطْمِثُنَّ إِنْسٌ قَبْلَهُمْ وَلَا جَانَ So this is let us in Surah Al-Rahman. Okay, so this tells us that there's going to be jinn there, okay? And you know, jinn also have the, they have their sustenance and enjoyments and things like this, all right? So everything in jinn is nothing except enjoyment for purpose of enjoyment and, okay. You finish? Yes. Did you have something, Ahmed? Did he even go? No, I didn't, didn't go. go. I'm oh, you didn't go? <laughs> <laughs> so, what's your subject? Um, my book is The Prophet Muhammad, so I'm selling the oh. best of all husbands. Okay. Um, I was reading about the most, uh, 
the the best way to comfort your wife is to wipe the tears from her her face. And it was talking about how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, uh, they were riding the camels. And when they were riding the camels, I, I think it was, uh, they were traveling somewhere or either. When she lost the necklace? No, she, her camel tilted to the side and she fell off. And, uh, I think, no, it kneeled down. It kneeled down and she fell off. Mm-hmm. Safiya, uh, uh, his wife Safiya, I forgot her uh, her full name, but mm-hmm. Safiya, she fell Safiya off. Safiya bin Tuhiyai? Yes. Mm-hmm. She fell off, and since she was the most fragile of his wives, she was crying. And he, he didn't want to uh, unmount any of the camels. He didn't want the people to unmount them. But just so that he can comfort his wife, he told everyone to unmount their camels. Mm-hmm. And he went to her. And he wiped her tears from her face, and she kept crying louder and louder every time he comforted her. And it was kind of embarrassing for him, but he he was okay with it and to comfort her. Mm. So, out of like respect, she went to Aisha radiallahu uh, and she said, "Let's uh, trade, you know, our days with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu mm-hmm. because I feel that he would he's upset with me that I I exposed him like this." Mm-hmm. So she left him with uh, Aisha radiallahu anh. and when he came into the tent he seen Aisha rather than Sophia and he asked he said where's Sophia she's like well today is your day with me he said we have switched so <laughs> okay. and then also another way how the Prophet وسلم, showed like romance and like uh, he was uh, devoted with his wives um, he wanted uh, Sophia to get onto the camel, so he kneeled down on his knee mm-hmm. and let her climb onto the camel. Yeah. See how humble he was. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. okay, this is nice. This is more like kindly than uh, romance. Okay, mm-hmm. but for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he's the Prophet of Allah, mm-hmm. and you know, to get into the camel, you're talking about <laughs> this is about four feet, you understand, climbing and to get. So for the Prophet Sallallahu to, to sit and make his uh, knee or his leg, you understand, like a ladder or a stiff uh, foot, uh, what you call Step stool. Stiff stool for hair. This, this is something to show you the greatness of the Prophet Sallallahu and how humble he is. And then I was also talking this about nice. how yeah. the Prophet Sallallahu he used, when his wife used to, Aisha used to drink from the cup, or any of his wives mm-hmm. drink from the cup, mm-hmm. he would drink from the same spot that she had drank to show and show her that. He it shows drink. love and concern mm-hmm. about you. Yeah, this is very good. This is very good, yes. <laughs> and these things is need to understand that the Muslims, uh, brothers, understand the Muslim brothers to read the things. So they can be more nicer, you understand, more kind to their wives. And because this is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu if the Prophet did this, you understand, we have to learn from him, you understand. It's not, you understand, that like they are made in the house and this it clean and we have, you understand, to give them a break sometimes. We have to be nice to them, you understand, and we have to uh, entertain them, you see. So this is something very important. And breaking uh, marriages it comes as a result of being the brothers. I think because I'm a man, I have to be tough. You have to be tough. It's good to be tough, but it's not for everything, you understand? Mm-hmm. You have to be tough. Certain times you have to be tough, and certain times you have to be soft and kind and more gentle, you see, especially with the wife. It says that the one who is best in character is the one, is who, the is one who more... That's Better that's to his right. wife, you understand, yeah. Alhamdulillah, thank you. Yeah. All right, uh, Ahmed. Um, my book is Paradise. Which book, still? <laughs> <laughs> mean, used to be your book. <laughs> it used to be my book. <laughs> okay. It was Paradise and Hell. And um, I went back to the light of Paradise, and I read that um, the light came from Allah's throne, and mm-hmm. that will like light up all of Paradise. Mm-hmm. It can be also the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? It can be lights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? All right. Uh, anything else you have for today, Ahmed? 
All right, guys. You have uh, Friday. You have Saturday. You have Sunday. Please make a good use of your time. Okay. Don't waste your time. Okay. It is very important that you educate yourself. And don't waste the time. Also, I remind you that we have the Saturday. Actually, if you would like to come and spend the night tomorrow, uh, you're more than welcome. Yeah. Your first lecture will be after Fajr immediately, inshallah. So, All right, if you still have time, please go over the last verse before you go home so you don't forget it. What time is, I, what time is Fajr? Yeah. We'll pray at quarter to six. Uh, can I ask you one more question? Yes. Can you get out of Jannah? Say, can somebody, don't say you, oh, okay? Yeah. We have to learn how to ask questions. <laughs> can you, you understand, are you, sub okay? When you're in hell. <laughs> okay, yeah. Like somebody say, when you are in hell, you don't say to the person. Yeah, because, um, okay. <laughs> Mr. So and so, take your hat out. Ain't no some nice socks. Okay, can some. In the shoe shelf, brother. Put it in the shoe shelf. <laughs> yes. Can someone get out of paradise? Get out of paradise? Yes, you go in okay. outer space. Why would you want out of space? Mm -hmm. What do you mean, out of space? Um, like. The galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If 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 somebody take you from the street being homeless and get you a nice fancy house with a swimming pool and 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 all the things, what do you think that <laughs> cause you to think about? Oh, I want to go and sleep under the bridge in the cold weather and be have diarrhea in the morning because my stomach understands. This. How, how? I mean, not, like, not like stay, not permanently, but just explore. But a lot explore what you go in anything that you wish. You understand anything is you couldn't out. Is, what space you talking about? Don't compare the hereafter with this limited life. This is limited life in everything. In paradise, you you could not see yourself or thinking about I want to go someplace else because <laughs> anything you can imagine as a mean of inter entertainment and enjoyment you will find it there so there's no way that you're going to be thinking about oh can I get outside <laughs> outside where I mean like there is looking... nothing there except hellfire or paradise <laughs> I mean like looking at the people in hellfire you can see you understand the people <laughs> of hell yeah, if you want to see Okay, subhanakallah wa bihamdu, shahadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa From Jannah? Yes. Without, without you getting burned. <laughs>